turn around, it was then she noticed two small gray beings. Then she passed out. The next day, her mother confirmed that she did get up after hearing a noise in her daughter's room, but that some sort of a force compelled her to go back to bed. Gradually, Sue would come to realize that she'd been abducted since childhood, but simply didn't understand what was happening. That was really when I was 19 was the first time that I remembered seeing these beings when I was a kid, coming into the room and then um, waking up and finding them standing next to your bed and being terrified. And um, feeling that, I remember feeling that the world was just not a safe place, that there was nowhere that was safe, that no matter where I went or what I did, um, that they could find me and that nobody could help me. Nobody could, nobody could stop it. It was really scary. <laughs> <laughs> scary way to grow up. And uh, so as I got older, that's what bothered me so much with my kids was knowing that they were also being visited and there was nothing I could do about it. David, Sue's husband, manages a construction company. A nature lover, he's preparing for retirement by turning part of their land into a Christmas tree farm. David gets up at dawn every morning. He's never been abducted himself, and he lived with Sue for over 30 years. The trees on the sides of the field are all old, a lot of them, and uh, they're um, starting to fall, you know, starting to fall on my Christmas trees and stuff. So, oh. so I take them down, use them for firewood rather than let them fall into the field. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. You have seen things yourself around here? Not so much seeing things, but being paralyzed. Oh, yeah. You know, held down, and uh, where I can't move. It was involved with things that were going on with Sue, as near as I can tell, and I tried to get up, and I'd be paralyzed. You know, I couldn't move. Do you remember what's happened then? Oh, I never can remember anything. Just before being paralyzed? Um, just the noises or something, or she was stirring and I was trying to get up and, you know, to see what was going on. Might be obsessing, no? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, just, it just, um, it even happened, that happens here to me, too. Seems like a heavy weight is holding me down. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, just, you know, holding me in bed and, uh, uh, I, I can't explain it, except it, it's, I'm strong, and I, I, can't, I can't hold it back. And then I go to sleep or something, and when I wake up, it's okay. After lunch, David went outside to do some work on the farm, as he liked to call it, his Christmas tree farm. Winter was setting in. David and Sue have two children, Danny and Jake, who are both going on 30 and no longer lived with their parents. In 1990, Sue experienced an abduction in which her two children were also involved. Danny was 13 and Jake 11. Night had fallen. Sue and David were woken up by a blue light and their dog, Molly, whining. The dog was downstairs, petrified. Sue got up, but David couldn't get out of bed. Sue suddenly felt as if she was being pushed towards the stairs. As I walked down the stairs, I remember thinking, um, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm looking at this is, this is my home. It's Sunday night. David's in bed. It's 11 o'clock. This is, you know, these are my pictures that are on the wall. This is the, kind, this is the color of my rug. I know that I'm awake. And I stepped into the kitchen. And uh, Danny was standing there. He was 13. And he, uh, he was standing like a robot. I mean, his hands, his hands were really down like this against his side, and his eyes were really big. And he looked so scared. And I stepped toward him, and I remember thinking, my God, he's paralyzed with fear. That's the thought that went through my mind. And I stepped toward him, and I put my hands out to him, and I said, sweetie, they won't hurt you. 
they won't hurt you, you'll be okay, they won't hurt you. And it was like he couldn't even hear me, he didn't look at me, his eyes were just like straight ahead. And the light was all around us at that time. And I walked past him and pulled in behind him, stepped in behind him. And just as I stepped in behind him, I could see Jake coming in the other door into the kitchen. And I remember thinking I was so angry because I thought, they've been messing with me my whole life. Don't mess with my kids. But there was nothing I could do. And that's the last thing that I remember. Everything after that was like a dream. It just got like really, you know, like in a dream where things, you know, out of sequence and I knew I wasn't in my home. I didn't know where I was, but I could hear Danny screaming and um, and I was just I, like trying to hit something. I remember it was just really crazy. And then uh, the next thing that I remember was waking up the next morning, waking up in bed and... David was there, and uh, when I woke up, I, I laid awake for a few minutes, and I thought, it had to have been a dream. So he said, you did. You did get up. He said, um, and I did speak to you. You were walking around the end of the bed, and he said, you, I asked you where you were going, and you said that now he was crying and that you were going downstairs. He said, I tried to get up, and I couldn't move because I, it was like I was paralyzed. And something was pushing down on me, and everything went black, and I couldn't remember anything after that. And I remember feeling such total helpless fear. You know, the birds are eating the bugs in the tree, so it's time to, you know, make it into wood. See the holes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just why the limbs are breaking off, and it's just, uh, I'd rather burn it than just have it rot. What do you want to know, Captain? Just to know what, you, what you're feeling about all this thing happening to, to Sue and your children. Oh! I don't know. I mean, I... it's something so, so weird. How did you react first when, when you... When was it the first time you you noticed that something was going wrong? Uh, well, she started having, you know, these experiences. She has since she was a child. And then, uh, you know, after the boys were born, there just more and more stuff happening to her. And uh, um, so we just, uh, you know, and I just learned more about it by listening to her. Just like spirituality, I've learned by listening and watching what happens and, um, and, you know, pretty much that's, you know, that's the way it is. It just, there's not much you can do about it. Um, there's just a lot of educated people that believe, you know, in the UFO phenomenon. And I'm not putting myself as one of the educated, but you have to keep your mind open for everything, you know. And uh, so that's what it is. Not a single person to date is able to provide a reasonable explanation for what happened to these experiencers. They're honest people of sound mind and something external interfered in their lives. It may be time to stop saying that anything that we fail to understand simply does not exist. I read this article, I, um, and I kept asking as I was reading it, because it was a kind of Jungian interpretation of the UFO phenomenon, and I kept asking, okay, but is this real? Now, what I meant was real probably was pretty literal at the time. I mean, are, we, are UFOs real? Are people really seeing aliens and, you know, this kind of thing? And um, I guess if you ask a question strongly enough, the universe cooperates and gives you information relevant to the question. So, where are you?